guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see from this mess over here, today is going to be part one of my spring clean and decorate. This is mostly Easter stuff and a few just like generic spring decor pieces that I'm going to be adding in today when I take down all of the St. Patrick's Day stuff in my house. I don't have enough there, like I still have no idea what I'm doing with my couch. So there's certain areas I still have to do, but those will be gonna get it all done later in the month, but I'm gonna get started at least today. Also at the end of this video, there will be a few spring-ish type recipes for you guys because you know that I love to do that. But I'm gonna stop rambling now and just get started. If you enjoy what you see, please consider subscribing and joining my channel. I would love to have you guys and I'm gonna shut up now and just go. Most of this, oh, ignore my daughter's teacup. Most of this is from previous years. This was added new this year as well as that Easter bunny thing right there, that pillow and those two bunnies but everything else is from last year at some point in my spring decorating. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day and our leprechaun always destroys our house. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you guys just a little bit of that footage, what we did for breakfast, and then move on in to today's video. to 
that I'm still keeping to myself Cause you don't listen, babe But still you got me missing you When I see you, my heart starts racing But I don't know if I like this Kitchen and dining room are done. I'm gonna start moving into the few areas in the living room and the front walkway that I can do. But like I said, I don't have throw pillows, throw blankets, all that stuff. I haven't gone that far yet. But my husband did find this up in the front of the Target dollar spot and he loved it and thought it was adorable. So I do have one Easter pillow, but I'm not gonna put it out today because I mean, obviously I don't have the rest of the couch done. But I mean, I do have at least one pillow. So I'll be basing the rest of the color scheme off of that. But now I'm gonna move into the living room on top of the mantle and in front of the TV. portion is done and there are some areas that I filmed earlier and they look completely different now I'll show you guys what I mean one example in a minute but the decorative portions done now let's go into the recipes one example that I just stuck randomly there I mean I like it I think it looks good but I had no idea where to put that so I mean there's a lot of things that are gonna change over the next couple weeks but that's just one right now that's changed since I filmed the first recipe is actually our dinner tonight and it is a grilled chicken bruschetta. It's like a play on bruschetta. It was so good. I learned about it over summer and we had it several times. We had it all through winter even though it's kind of more of a spring summery dish. But that's why I'm sharing it with you guys because it is just phenomenal. No matter what time of year, but spring and summer especially, it's just really refreshing. Let's go over the ingredients. You need chicken, you can use chicken breast, chicken tenders, chicken thighs, whatever you want to use. And you can either do the full breast or you can split them in half like I'm going to do. Just because they're thinner, it just I like it better that way. But you could do anything you want to for that. Olive oil, salt, pepper, Italian seasoning. That, these three are going to go on the chicken and you're going to use them in the topping. And then for the topping, you need Roma tomatoes, a red onion, garlic, Parmesan cheese, basil, you can use dried basil too. I've done that with this recipe. Either one works. And then some balsamic vinegar to go over the top. And obviously those things right there are going in this as well, but that is the ingredient list right there. Cut your chicken down however you're gonna do it. And then you're just going to do some salt and pepper. And then Italian seasoning. Flip them over. 
and then season the other side. You don't have to grill these. They are very good if you grill them, but you can grill them outside, inside. I'm using my Ninja Foodi, but I've also done these in a pan with just some olive oil, and they are delicious that way too. So just cook your chicken however you want to. You don't have to grill it. Ignore my loud grill in the background. Cut all of your tomatoes in half, gut them, take all the seeds and stuff out, and just make a pile, as well as cut your onion down. The easiest thing to do with the basil, get a few leaves, put them in a pile, and then you're gonna roll them up, okay? Roll them up. Take a good sharp knife, and just cut them really, really thin. And then what you'll get is these little ribbons. They look almost like grass. Or you can finely chop it, that's up to you. But this is what the original recipe always said, so when I do fresh, I do that. This is one of those recipes I love to use my chopper for. If you don't, you want it pretty finely, finely chopped on the vegetables. But just put it in there and, and it chops them all. For anyone following along that likes more specific measurements than just six tomatoes or three tomatoes, it's just over two cups of diced. And then half that red onion gave me just slightly over a cup. I don't know if I'll use all of this yet. I'm going to mix it in there with the tomatoes first and look. The majority of this topping is really done to taste. Like as far as the garlic goes, just put however much you like. If you don't like raw garlic, don't put it in at all. Or use garlic powder. The basil, again, to however much you want or use the dried, your choice. The olive oil, I start with a tablespoon and then see what the consistency looks like. And then the Parmesan cheese, I go with like, about a pretty good handful, it's about a quarter of a cup maybe. And then if I want more, I put more. A Little bit of salt, pepper to taste, mix it all up. You're not cooking this, you're going to be eating it raw. So at this point, go ahead and taste it yourself, just this by itself. If it needs more salt, more pepper, more seasoning, whatever you wanna to do to it, go ahead. But that is the right consistency that you're looking for right there. I'm gonna show you the plating in one second. These are actually pierogies. If you've never had them before, they're in the frozen section. These are the minis, we don't normally do the minis, but they're really, really good with this because that does like amazing things with this topping. So I do recommend this. You can use rice, mashed potatoes, any vegetable, whatever you want, but this is just what we prefer. Just take your piece of chicken and put the topping across it. Not like one mound in the middle. You kind of want to get it over the chicken on all sides. If you have balsamic glaze, it goes over easier, but it is stronger because all it is is really cooked down reduced balsamic vinegar. Otherwise, this will come out pretty quickly, but you just want to get it lightly over the top like that. And then here's another one plated up with the chicken and the pierogies. This is amazing, but even that mixed into rice is so good too. But yeah, very easy, fresh dinner. It's just delicious. Moving on to dessert. Now this is another one that I am literally trying out. If it fails, I mean, hey, I've got other ways to try it. But I've seen online where you can do different things about stuffing Cadbury cream eggs into like brownies and cake and cookies and different things. Well, I'm taking the miniature ones and I'm going to try and stuff them into chocolate chip cookies. If I was doing the chocolate chip cookie dough from scratch, obviously I wouldn't be so worried because I could make it work but I'm also gonna shortcut like I like to do, so let's just hope this turns out good. What I'm essentially gonna do is I'm gonna use two cookies for each Cadbury cream egg, and I'm going to put it in the middle. I'm gonna take one cookie, kind of like dome it, put the egg in the middle, and then take the other one, make the same type of dome shape to go over the top, and turn into one big, chocolate chip cookie. Just make sure you seal it up really good like that. And there we go, hopefully this works. So there they are, the 12 of them. I'm going to put them in 350 degrees about, I'm gonna guess about 10 to 12 minutes, but I'll let you guys know the exact number. But just fingers crossed it doesn't turn into an entire sheet pan of cookie. This was about 14 or 15 minutes and right at the end a few of them popped there's like two really bad and two not so bad, but otherwise they look pretty good. They taste good, 
but they are a little chewy, like the cream part of them. It was a little chewy, almost like it caramelized in there, so just keep that in mind, but otherwise they are very good. I had another dessert I was going to make for you guys, but I'm gonna save that for another video later this week. Those cookies are more than sweet enough, and it's already after eight o'clock at night, so I'm not putting more sugar into the house today. So just look for that. It is like um, a brownie, blondie type thing. But like I said, it'll be in another video probably next week for you guys. Otherwise, I am done with this round of spring cleaning and decorating. I still have several places in my house to go, but we also have over a month until Easter, so there's plenty of time for that. If you enjoyed this one, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed what you saw, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Good night. Give me love, give me all your love, give me all your love.